law again. In the proclaiming, the proclaimer's book, rather, which of course the title, complete title of it is Jehovah's Witnesses, Proclaimers of God's Kingdom. We've reached chapter five where they get into the work of, of Russell. And the, and the chapter is entitled Proclaiming the Lord's Return. And in a bracket under that, 1870 to 1914. And we'll get into the, the misleading aspect of even the title in a minute. But mm -hmm. let's, let's read through it first. It starts with a quote from C.T. Russell. Yes. From the Watchtower of July 15, 1906, Russell says, The following history is given not merely because I have been urged to give a review of God's leadings in the path of light, but specially because I believe it is needful that the truth be modestly told, that misapprehensions and prejudicial misstatements may be disarmed, and that our readers may see how hitherto the Lord has helped and guided. Following those words, Charles Taze Russell proceeded to outline the developments that led to his publishing Millennial Dawn, later called Studies in the Scriptures, and Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence, now known as the Watchtower Announcing Jehovah's Kingdom. This history is of special interest to Jehovah's Witnesses. Why? Because their present understanding of Bible truths and their activities can be traced back to the 1870s and the work of C.T. Russell and his associates, and from there to the Bible and early Christianity. Who was Charles Taze Russell? Does the history of his work give evidence of the Lord's help and guidance? Good question. Subhead, A Search for Truth. C.T. Russell was born in the United States in Allegheny, now part of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on February 16, 1852. He was the second son of Joseph L. and Anne Eliza Burney Russell, who were Presbyterians of Scottish-Irish descent. Charles' mother died when he was only nine years old, but from an early age, Charles was influenced by both of his religiously minded parents. As a later associate of C.T. Russell put it, they trained the small twig and it grew in the direction of the Lord. Although brought up as a Presbyterian, Charles eventually joined the Congregational Church because he preferred its views. Young Charles was evidently quite a businessman. At just 11 years of age, he became a partner with his father in a thriving men's clothing store. Charles enlarged the business, eventually operating a number of different stores himself. Although things went well for him in business, spiritually he was very troubled. Why was this? Charles's parents sincerely believed the creeds of Christendom's churches and brought him up to accept them too. Young Charles was thus taught that God is love, yet that he had created men inherently immortal and had provided a fiery place in which he would eternally torment all except those who had been predestined to be saved. Such an idea repulsed the honest heart of teenage Charles. He reasoned, A God that would use his power to create human beings whom he foreknew and predestined should be eternally tormented, could be neither wise just nor loving. His standard would be lower than that of many men. That was quoting Russell. But young Russell was no atheist. He simply could not accept the commonly understood teachings of the churches. He explained, Gradually I was led to see that though each of the creeds contained some elements of truth, they were, on the whole, misleading and contradictory of God's word. Indeed, in the creeds of the churches, elements of truth were buried under a morass of pagan teachings that had infiltrated uh, tainted Christianity during the centuries-long apostasy. Turning away from the church creeds and searching for truth, Russell examined some leading oriental religions 
only to find these unsatisfactory. Oh, okay, back to the title, Proclaiming the Lord's Return, 1870 to 1914. Mm -hmm. Why is that even it, by itself misleading? Well, I think because they end with 1914, you assume that all their beliefs are the same as they currently say they were, that it ends in 1914, but that's not true. They didn't. They, they weren't really talking about the Lord's return. They thought he'd already returned. Yeah, he'd arrived before already. Before 1914. They, are, they believed he'd arrived already mm -hmm. in 1874, invisibly. Yeah. And they believed he would, well, at least in the Barber days, they believed that he would physically return, visibly return in 1914. Mm -hmm. And Armageddon would therefore occur then. Yeah. So even the title misleads you in the sense that you assume that the message was basically true. And the same as as has been held for most of their time, they think, is is that everything ended in 1914 and we're looking for, we're in the last days and mm. it's all proved by his predicting it. And then this direct quote from the 1906 Watchtower, I find, uh, mm -hmm. well, it's, it's, some of it sticks in my crawl, let's put it that way, but, <laughs> because it, he's giving a review in 1906, so by this time he's already been in the ministry for some 30 or 35 years of, of God's leadings, he calls them. Yeah. A review of God's leadings in the path of light. So he's attributing all of these teachings that he has been publicly preaching these decades As coming to God. from God. So he's credited or blamed, if you'd rather, for, for the what mistakes. He, what he presents. Yeah. yeah, and then in the next line, especially because I believe it to be needful that the truth be modestly told. Oh my. He's, there's no modesty. At this, this point, there's no more modesty. He's already afflicted with what I tend to think of as CCS, correcting Christendom syndrome. He, mm. he just believes he knows better than everybody who's ever lived before him, including yeah. Nelson Barber, who by the 1879 yeah. he's broken away from. Mm -hmm. So and then there's in the last line of that, that quote from the Watchtower, the readers may see how hitherto the Lord has helped and guided. Again, the Lord himself is being credited, blamed, we would say now, for yeah. everything that's been revealed thus far and preached, not just mm -hmm. not just believed, but preached publicly yeah. for decades. The, the renaming of the Watchtower is, is just stated, but it doesn't, doesn't make you necessarily notice that that has, shows the change. It does. Because they're, they're herald of Christ's presence. They think he's already been present there uh, s since uh, 1874. They yeah. think Christ has yeah. been present. And Millennial Dawn, which we have several editions of the original original Millennial Dawn, mm -hmm. which is the same books but with a different heading. Well, why did they change it to Studies in the Scriptures? Well, for one thing, another change that we don't we're not aware of at all till we do our own research is they believe the millennium had already arrived. The thousand years started in eighteen seventy two or seventy three, yeah. which of course they then moved a hundred years into the future to nineteen seventy five. Yeah, in nineteen sixty six they dawn changed of the that. millennium if if you think it's not happened yet. <laughs> and it's not coming till much later. And then this jumping over eighteen centuries again their present understanding of Bible truths and their activities can be traced back to the 1870s and the work of C.T. Russell as associates. Yes, that's right. And Barber, a few years before that. Your present beliefs come from those two men yeah. and, of course, Rutherford and Fred Franz later. But they claim it comes from the Bible and early Christianity, but what they taught back then doesn't resemble what the early church was teaching at all. Yeah. Then the biography, fine. Uh, uh, the credit that his parents were, were religiously minded. Mm -hmm. And here's a nice picture of Joseph L., his Is father, yeah. Joseph L. Russell, yeah. the, who under, looks like a dignified man. Under, the, under his picture, it says, Joseph L. Russell, Charles' father, was a member of the Allegheny Bible study class and a close associate of his son, in the activities of the Watchtower Society until his death in 1897. So what you have to ask is, was he a true believer then? Was he in the truth? 
Yeah. Because what did they teach in those days that was truth? We've just yeah. named a few things that they yeah. changed shortly after Russell. So if you want a kind of summary, the name Jehovah was not an emphasis back then. The, the kingdom hope was in heaven for everyone. Mm-hmm. There was no great crowd on the earth. There was no door-to-door mandate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kingdom started in 1878. That's right. Following the presence of Christ in 1874. And that the last the days date. began in? In 1799. So, and they were preaching all of this too as the divine plan. Yeah. And because they believed the kingdom was in heaven, everyone took the Lord's Supper. Yeah. And they all thought they were a part of Christ's body. So how much truth do we have to have for us to be in true tr- believers and to be in the yeah. true religion? That's right. That's because a good question if, to ask. Because if you believed these things today, you would, you would be kicked out of the, king, out of, out of the watchtower. Because none of those things are taught. So does that mean Joseph and Russell, uh, Charles, were not true believers? Because they've already said in, in the second last paragraph that we read that, that there, were part, there were truths in the creeds of Christendom. They rejected the creeds. They rejected many of these truths. But what's missing here is, okay, if, if you're willing to grant there's some truth in the creeds, mm-hmm. then... The same question comes up again, which is how much truth do you need before you can be called the truth? Yeah. And if if you reject Chris, Christendom because they have certain false teachings, then don't you have to reject your your ancestors, basically, Charles Taze and yeah. Rutherford, because they didn't have your teachings? And his parents, it says that his parents believed the creeds of Christendom's churches and brought him up to accept them. So does that mean they weren't? true Christians? Because nowadays, if you are in a church, the watcher is not going to say, no matter how sincere you are, that you are, Mm -hmm. you know, a good example to your children. They seem to think that they were religiously minded people who pointed Russell in the right direction. But today, would you credit Christian parents of that? No, of course not. You wouldn't. And, the, and another thing that really bothers me in that second last paragraph is Charles' parents sincerely believed the creeds of Christendom's churches and brought them up to accept them too. Yet, young Charles was taught that God is love, yet he had created men inherently immortal and provided a fiery place in which he would eternally torment all those except those who had been predestined to be saved. What they'd failed to do is to differ, differentiate between the creeds of Christendom Mm-hmm. and the denominational confessions. Yeah. So, for instance, all three of those doctrines they cite here, yeah. that in inherent immortality, fiery hell, and predestination, they're right. not taught in the original creeds of Christendom, although they are taught by some of the denominations yeah. much later. So they don't make a difference between, yeah, what would be called a denominational statement of faith today they Mm -hmm. would usually use that expression in Mm -hmm. the past it was confessions that that this is this is what the people of that particular denomination would emphasize and other churches would not emphasize or not believe so that's what's so misleading about the first sentence of the last paragraph but young russell was no atheist he simply could not accept the commonly understood teachings of the churches what you have to insert there, if you're going to say commonly understood, is by some of the churches. Yeah. Uh, but these partic- particular teachings that he's offended by are not in the ancient creeds. Mm-hmm. So therefore, they were not considered to be essential teachings of the church. And, and what is the basis for not believing something? Uh, to deciding whether or not it's true or false? It says he reasoned. Mm-hmm. So it's his own reasoning powers that he measures whether something is true or false. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ultimate epistemology of Charles Taze Russell, his own Mm -hmm. reasoning. And I'm afraid his descendants have that in common with Charles Taze Russell. Mm -hmm. Their ultimate test of, of truth is not what Revelation says, that is Revelation small r. It's yeah. what their own reasoning says must be must be the case. So how much falsehood uh, d- does someone have to have 
to make them in a false religion or be a false teacher. Mm. And and how much truth do you have to have to be in the true religion? Yeah, good questions. Uh, it must be said that most Protestants even don't believe in predestination the way it's stated here in this caricature. Mm. Because what did he? What does he reason? He reasoned that if a God who would use his power to create human beings whom he foreknew and predestinated should be eternally tormented, could be neither wise nor just nor yeah. loving. So they've got him predestined. His standard would be lower than that of many men. Mm -hmm. He's created a straw man here because most Protestants don't believe that. And I dare say the ancient, mm -hmm. the more ancient uh, denominations don't yeah. believe in double predestination either. So the difference between the elect and predestination is, is there are different uh, understandings about that. So... Yeah. yeah, it is a, a straw man. The straw man here is, to, to, to be blunt, is, is a certain form of Calvinism that he found Double objectionable. Double predestination. Double predestination, yeah. Where, where God is electing people to be damned yeah. and electing people to be saved. Yeah. Even most Calvinists don't believe double predestination, the ones I've talked to anyway. Mm -hmm. So in the last paragraph again, turning away from church creeds and churching. Well, he's not really turning away from the ancient creeds of the church, is he? He's turning, turning away from certain denominational mm -hmm. uh, confessions mm -hmm. is the best way to think about it. Yeah. We have done a, a video on the Apostles' Creed. Yeah. That might be worth looking at and uh, you did have a link though right yeah a, a link to a video i did when i was reading uh, wilberforce's book and uh, william wilberforce who was largely responsible for the end of slavery what was he doing when he was 25 years old and what was russell doing when he was 25 years old because the the quotes kind of led you to see what they both were doing like so uh, I thought okay well I'll go back and see what Russell was doing when he was 25 what he was <laughs> doing was correcting Christendom <laughs> <laughs> and well, then we were going to uh, link the playlist the have playlist. Jehovah's Witnesses ever been God's organization yeah mm -hmm. see you soon <laughs>